to share a project that I made. Um, this here is a Hollywood-style bomb prop that uh, was used in a treasure hunt uh, that a group of people put on. Um, I was in charge of one of the sites in the treasure hunt, and I wanted to create something that would be a very memorable experience. So I came up with this this uh, bomb diffusing type, uh, in very intense scenario. So a group of people would come to the site. Uh, they would be split into two different groups. One group would kind of go off to this kind of command center where they would be looking at uh, bomb schematics, uh, and the other two people would be, uh, one would be a bomb diffuser and the other one would be a bomb victim. So uh, I would take the uh, bomb uh, bomb diffuser and I'd kind of show him what uh, gear he would be using for, uh, for the activity. He had uh, a flak jacket that he would put on, he had a helmet that he would put on, he had uh, these wire cutters, uh, he would have a flashlight, and then he also had a walkie-talkie. Um, the walkie-talkie was actually used to communicate with the people in the command center uh, throughout the whole uh, activity. Uh, while I was, uh, he, while the bomb diffuser was kind of getting on all of his equipment and getting ready, I would take the uh, bomb victim, I would uh, bring them into kind of a dark, kind of atmospheric uh, garage setting. Um, I would tie them to a chair, kind of loosely tie them, you know, just, just for effect, and then uh, put this kind of bomb around their, around their neck like so, and then I'd also kind of put uh, a little duct tape over their mouth. Uh, also, kind of just to increase the the intensity of the, the experience, right? Um, so then, uh, once the uh, once the bomb victim was all tied to the chair and the bomb diffuser was ready to come in, um, as soon as they breached the door, that's when I would uh, kind of hit a button on my laptop computer to uh, trigger the countdown of the of the, uh, the bomb unit. So um, then, once the bomb diffuser was in the room, um, he would have you know, a time limit, obviously, to come into uh, come into the room, start examining the bomb, and then he would be communicating via, via the walkie-talkie to the people in the command center. The people in the command center were looking at uh, a ton of these uh, schematics. There's there's you know ten schematics here, um, and it's probably hard to see in the video, but basically the uh, schematics kind of match up to the wiring diagram um, uh, on the on the bomb uh, unit itself. So through the, the crux of the activity was basically was you needed to, to be able to communicate effectively um, from the, the bomb diffuser uh, seeing the bomb. Uh, he had to communicate what he was seeing, you know, in terms of uh, what color the wires are here, which which color wire crosses over which other color wire. Um, he also had to communicate the model number down here. Here's a partial model number, so a lot of these schematics will have a model number that, that might be close, um, but you know this this kind of works with the process of elimination to pare down um, the correct to find the correct schematic. Um, then once kind of it's agreed uh, in the command center that they have the they they're looking at the correct uh, schematic, the people in the command center would be like, um, okay, you know um, these wires cross these wires, we get that, and the model number matches up, so go ahead and, and cut the green wire to diffuse and then uh, if they had played the game correctly um, the uh, bomb diffusers would go ahead and cut the green wire and if they were right uh, then they would play this really kind of a triumphant sound effect. If they were wrong um, the uh, bomb would actually start counting down faster. Um, if, they, if they cut another wire after that um, or if they, their time ran out, then the bomb would explode and, and in which case there would be a very loud sound effect coming through the speakers uh, on the uh, the computer, so um, that's uh, that's about the crux of it. I'll I'll do a little bit of more of a zoomed in. Okay, I just wanted to give a rundown on uh, how I made this and what what the system is comprised of. Uh, so this is just a project enclosure that I got from SparkFun. Um, inside here, there's an Arduino microcontroller running the whole thing. Um, it has a Bluetooth uh, module which is uh, talking to my laptop over here. Um, you can see as I I'll hit the you know the S, the reset button, um, the R button, which stops the clock. You know, it says uh, you know reset, um, and then I'll hit the S button on my uh, keyboard, uh, which will uh, start the start the timer again. Uh, that's for when a new new team comes in. Um, so the the Bluetooth module is kind of talking to uh, a program that which is running on the my laptop uh, and. I was able to, to you know, be far away when I, I started and stopped the um, the bomb. Um, and uh, what else? This is the uh, this is just an LED screen that I uh, got also from SparkFun. It's kind of the the more beefed up version, which is, just allows you to 
easily, uh, you know, spe you speak serially to it from the Arduino uh, to, to make it run. Um, and then, yeah, the, that's the crux of it. Um, back here, you just see like a 9 volt battery, which is uh, powering the whole deal. And uh, these are just wires I got from SparkFun, also. Um, and that's about it. Okay, so you can see here that the bomb is uh, currently counting down. Um, and uh, what we're going to go do here is uh, we're going to cut the correct wire and kind of see what happens. So the correct wire is the yellow wire according to, to the schematics. Um, so if we go ahead and cut that. You kind of hear that triumphant sound. Um, and the, the people uh, correctly diffuse the, the bomb. Um, so now... Uh, one of the thing, things that was interesting about the uh, treasure hunt was that we had a high volume of teams. We had 15 teams coming through the treasure hunt. So that meant that we needed a very quick reset time. So one of the challenges of this project was making, um, making the bomb uh, kind of quickly resettable. And you see here uh, what I did is uh, I, I removed the cut wire, um, and I have all these kind of pre-cut pre wires here. Um, pre-stripped wires, I should say, just to uh, come in and uh, quickly kind of take out the cut wire and then uh, put in the um, the pre-stripped wire, as you just uh, saw there. So now, you know, within within 30 seconds, I was able to kind of have the bomb uh, up and running again, which which worked out very well considering how much uh, kind of turnover we had for the different uh, teams. So. Um, so we just cut the correct wire, and you kind of heard that um, correct bomb, ta-da, kind of uh, correct sound for um, reward for cutting the correct wire. Let's go ahead and cut one of the incorrect wires here. Um, let's say if you, if you know, were bad at communication uh, and the people in the command center told you to cut the uh, white uh, wire, which is wrong. Oh, now all of a sudden we're seeing that the clock is actually counting down way, way, way faster. So... Um, you know, at this point, um, the people, the bomb diffuser is kind of freaking out, and he's ta he's yelling at the people in the command center. I just cut the wrong wire, and the time's counting down. You know, which wire should I cut? I needed to cut another one. So then they're kind of frantically trying to come up with a wire. So let's say we cut the red wire before time runs out. Boom. So that was the inc that was also incorrect. Um, so then you kind of treated with the uh, the bomb explosion. And uh, during the sequence, it was coming out of the speakers, and I had speakers up really loud, so kind of had the cool effect. So, anyways, that's my project. I uh, I hope you enjoyed it, um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.